Welcome to Sound Matters Podcast, where we uncover the fascinating stories behind music, technology, and culture. I'm Richard L. Beeston B.A., and today we're diving into the incredible journey of music production, the technological revolution that transformed how we create, record, and distribute music. Imagine a world without studios, microphones, or digital effects. Hard to picture, right? The way we experience music today is the result of centuries of technological advancements, from early recording devices to modern digital audio workstations. So, how did we get here? Let's rewind time and explore the birth of music production. Before we could produce music in a studio, we needed a way to capture sound. That journey began in the late 19th century with Thomas Edison's phonograph in 1877. This device could record and play back sound using a rotating cylinder wrapped in tin foil. Edison's invention was groundbreaking, but it wasn't designed for music production. It was more of a novelty, used for business dictation and spoken word recordings. Then, in the 1880s, Emile Berliner introduced the gramophone, which used flat discs instead of cylinders. This was a game-changer because discs were easier to mass-produce, leading to the birth of the modern record industry. But here's the catch. Early recordings were made acoustically, Musicians had to perform in front of a giant horn that funneled sound waves directly onto the recording medium. There were no microphones, no mixing, and certainly no auto-tune. Everything changed in the 1920s with the invention of the carbon microphone and electrical recording. For the first time, music could be captured with clarity and amplified electronically. One of the biggest pioneers of this era was Bell Labs which developed early condenser microphones that drastically improved recording quality. This allowed for the rise of crooners like Bing Crosby, whose smooth vocal style wouldn't have been possible in the acoustic recording era. Another major advancement was magnetic tape recording, which came in the 1930s, but was perfected in the 1940s. The Nazis were actually ahead in this technology, using high-quality tape machines for radio propaganda during World War II. After the war, an American soldier named Jack Mullen brought back a German magnetophone tape recorder, and that led to the revolution of multi-track recording. Suddenly, musicians didn't have to record an entire performance in one take. They could overdub parts, correct mistakes, and experiment with sound in ways never before possible. Without this development, we wouldn't have legends like Le Paul, who pioneered multi-track recording and introduced new ways of layering sound. As technology improved, recording studios became the heart of music production. In the 1950s and 60s, studios like Abbey Road, Sun Studios, and Motown's Hitsville, USA, became iconic for their unique sound. This era gave us the rise of four-track recording, which allowed bands like The Beatles to experiment with complex arrangements. George Martin, often called the Fifth Beatle, used techniques like tape loops, reverse recording, and artificial double tracking to push the boundaries of what was possible. Meanwhile, in the 1970s, the rise of analog synthesizers changed music forever. Companies like Moog and ARP introduced synthesizers that allowed musicians to create entirely new sounds. Progressive rock bands, funk artists, and eventually electronic musicians embraced this technology to redefine music production. By the late 70s, another major innovation emerged. The drum machine. The Roland TR-808 in particular became legendary, shaping everything from hip-hop to house music. Even today, its deep bass and crisp hi-hats are used in modern tracks. The 1980s and 90s saw the shift from analog to digital recording, which completely transformed music production. Digital tape, sampling, and MIDI, musical instrument digital interface, allowed producers to manipulate sound with unprecedented precision. Then, in the late 90s and early 2000s, DAWs, digital audio workstations like Pro Tools, Florida Studio, and Ableton Live changed everything. Now, anyone with a computer could produce professional quality music without a massive studio setup. Artists like Daft Punk, Kanye West, and Billie Eilish took advantage of digital production to create unique genre-blending sounds. And today, platforms like SoundCloud and Bandcamp allow independent artists to distribute music globally without a record label. We've come a long way from cutting wax cylinders to producing entire albums on a laptop. 
But what's next for music production? As we look to the future, we're seeing AI-generated music, blockchain-based royalties, and even holographic performances. AI tools like AIVA and OpenAI's Jukebox can generate compositions based on user input, raising questions about the role of human creativity in music. Meanwhile, spatial audio and immersive 3D sound are pushing music beyond stereo, creating hyper-realistic listening experiences. Imagine putting on VR headphones and feeling like you're inside a live concert. From phonographs to digital streaming, the journey of music production is a testament to human creativity and innovation. Technology continues to redefine the way we create and experience sound. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into music production history. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to Sound Matters Podcast and leave a review. What excites you most about the future of music? Let's chat on social media. Until next time, keep making and enjoying great music.